do leave us a comment and of course share share the program so let's get started on uh sir eric matthew gary as i said the program today we're going to focus on who sir eric gary was how he became um the father of independence um a bit about his life how he got to where he was and then of course uh he is his end, right? So we're gonna talk about Sir Eric Matthew Geary because independence would not have been possible without Sir Eric Matthew Geary. So that's where we're gonna start. So Sir Eric Matthew Geary. So Sir Eric Matthew Geary was born in 1922. Uh, he was born to parents Theresa and Douglas Geary of St. Andrews. He was born in Big Parish. Right, so he's from the big parish of St. Andrews, the village of Moya in St. Andrews, to be exact. So he is one of the, I, I believe on record, um, those who are more historian than me could correct me, but I, I believe that he's the only prime minister to date from the big parish of St. Andrew. Um, so he, he still holds that that historic record but he was he was he was born and grew up in the parish of saint andrews he attended the saint mary's rc school or what we call the lafayette rc school um so he attended that primary school and in those times they had a position in schools called a student teacher position whereby uh, students, as they got older, they would also teach the classes. So Sir Eric Matthew Geary was also a student teacher. So he attended St. Mary's RC School, and he also taught there as a student teacher. Again, this was back in the 30s and 1930s, 1940s period. So that was, that was part of uh, the, the education system, right? My my mother was was a student teacher as well, and most of your either your parents or your grandparents will, could probably recall also being student teachers, um, if they grew up in that period of time of Grenada's history, right? So that's 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 important to note. Um, so Eric Matthew Gary was also a. Uh, uh, a uh, uh, Catholic, uh, he was an acolyte in the in the church, and he uh, he was he played a role in the church as part of his upbring um, upbringing. In that period of time in Grenada's history, um, many um men especially um migrated. They left Grenada and either traveled to Trinidad and stayed or went on to Aruba. So Aruba is part of the ABC island. So it's Aruba, Bonnet, and Cura. So they make up the ABC islands. So Eric Macho Gary, similar to other men during that period of time in Grenada's history, migrated to Trinidad. He stayed in Trinidad for about two years from 1939 to 1941, and then eventually made his way to Aruba. Aruba at the time was the oil capital of the Caribbean, right? Many people were going there because they had oil and uh, there was jobs in the oil industry with oil companies. So Eric Matthew Gary um, worked for an oil company in Aruba and he stayed in Aruba for uh, several years before returning to Grenada. Um, it, it is known that while he was in Aruba, he played a role in organizing oil workers there um, as part of a, a, a labor movement. It is also believed, um, based on what the history books say, that uh, he was expelled from Aruba. He did not leave willingly. He was expelled from Aruba and was forced to return to Grenada because of the role he was playing there in mobilizing oil workers and so forth as part of a, a, a labor movement. So that, that is believed, right? It's believed that. So Eric Matthew Gary returned to Grenada and... When he returned to Grenada is when really um, 
he started his political life and his trade unionism life. But before we get into that, um, once he returned to Grenada, he married, he married a woman named Cynthia Gary. So Cynthia Gary um, became his wife. But most importantly about Cynthia Gary was that she would go on to become the first female member of parliament. Um, so during the period 1974 to 1979, when GLP was in power, we're going to come to that later, uh, Cynthia Gary served as the Minister of Education. Gary, her husband, Eric Gary, was the Prime Minister. And she, Cynthia, was the Minister of Education um, during that period of time before the overthrow um, by the New Jewel Movement of 79. So she is noted in the historic books, history books as being the first female member of parliament. She was originally from the parish of St. David and, um, yes, yeah, Central St. David. So the Gary family uh, of St. David, then uh, Cynthia Gary is their, their, their relative. Uh, Eric and Cynthia Gary had two daughters, Jennifer and Marcel Gary. So those are the two children of Sir Eric Matthew Gary. As I said, when Gary returned, um, he began his political and his trade union um, life at the same time. So he returned to Grenada from Aruba and he began what is the Grenada Mental and Manual Workers Union. So the name has changed. So today it's called, uh, I believe it's the Grenada Manual and Maritime Intellectual Workers Union. So the name has shifted a bit, um, but originally it was the Grenada Mental and Manual Workers Union. And the majority of the workers who were part of that union were estate workers, agricultural laborers in the rural areas who worked either on nutmeg or cocoa estates, which was the main source of livelihood for many of the working class Grenadians at the time. So Eric Gary formed the GMMWU uh, in 1950. And then one year later, using the trade union support as his base, he formed the political party, the Grenada United Labour Party, or GULP. So today, GULP is one of the oldest um, political parties still in existence. They're still in existence. They have been a bit quiet the last couple of years. But they're still in existence today. And that party was formed by Sir Eric Matthew Geary in 1951. Again, most of the support of the uh, GLP came from workers from the GMMWU. They were so the, the political um party got its base from the trade union um GMMWU. Nineteen fifty one was also important in many ways. So nineteen fifty one was a very um historic year in Grenada's history. There were there were I think two or three major um historic things occurred in nineteen fifty one. So uh, the first one I'll talk about. Uh so in nineteen fifty one Grenada achieved universal adult suffrage. So universal adult suffrage really is the right to vote, the right for persons over the age of 18 to vote. So that became a reality in 1951. So the 1951 elections was the first time that Grenadians who were over the age of, of 18 got the right to vote in an election. 
Um, so that was very historic. So today, people over 18 could vote. That was because of universal adult suffrage achieved back in 1951. So the political system, the parliamentary system is based upon um, this universal adult suffrage that if you're 18, you can vote, you can participate in elections and select your member of, of, of parliamentary, your member of parliament, your parliamentary representative, as it is called. So in that 1951 elections was the very first time that Sir Eric Matthew Gary participated in general elections and he won his seat. Right. So that was 1951. So it, it's. Well, the people born in 1951 are how old today? Um, 1951. Somebody do the maths. I, I can't. I can't tell you offhand, but uh, probably in the in the 60s. I mean, my math is wrong. It could be 70s. Um, right. So 1951. So that was 1951. Also in 1951, there was Sky Red. The events of Sky Red. So there is this book. I'm gonna hold it up so people could see. So are those who are more interested in books, right? There is this book. It, the book was written by um Bernard Code. So Bernard Code was one of the um 17 who were imprisoned for the Grenada Revolution. He has written this book, The Grenada Revolution, volume number three, Sky Red, A Tale of Two Revolutions. So those who are interested in more reading a book about what happened in Sky Red, they can buy this book. Um, you could buy it on Amazon if you're in the US or in Canada. And then if you are in Grenada, check out Art and Soul in the Spiceland Mall, and you can purchase this book, right? So those who are interested more in our book. So we're going to take a short break here, and then I'm going to come back and tell you a little bit more about Sky Red. But let's take a quick commercial break, and we will be right back. Okay, so we are back. I just as as I as I took a break there, I saw that our Jambala C Grenada is in the comments. So good night to you, Mr. E and Charles. Uh, we should link up so I can have you on the program so you can talk about some educate the people on the jab jab, right? I've been following the movement on your social media pages and I know that you have an upcoming event in uh in august right so it'll be good to have you on the program here in one of our upcoming seasons of island learning grenada right so all good um so let's talk about sky red um so sky red so 1951 as i said was the sky red so the first question you may be asking yourself why was the event called sky red well simple um, during that period of time, it was a period of time. So from February 19th to March 15th, the skies were ablaze. Um, agricultural workers were burning down estates. They were burning down um, government buildings. So this, the place was, 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 the, was red. 
with, with fire and smoke. So that's really why the it got its name Skyred because there was lots of burning, right? Agricultural workers, they really wanted an increase in their wages. That was what they were fighting for. Um, estate workers, they used to make like real small money. So like in the in, back then we were using the pence and the the, the, the British the British currency. So we were using pence and so forth, right? So they were earning very low wages and they wanted um, an increasing wages and they weren't getting it against the, the owners of the estate. So it began a period of raiding and looting of estates, nutmeg and cocoa estates. Um, and because of the blaze from the fire and so forth, uh, email illuminating the whole atmosphere, that's why the event during that period of time is called Sky Red. So Eric, so Eric Matthew Gary was um, at the time, because of his affiliation to the GMMWU, essentially he was the, the face, the leader behind the Sky Red events. And um, it was uh, it, it is a, a historic part of of um, Grenada's history. Eventually, all was calmed, and the workers or the estate owners, estate workers, did manage to get an increase in pay. But it was a very disruptive time in terms of burning of estates and, and so forth that occurred in 1951, and it's called Skyred. Again, check out Bernard Code's book for more information. Uh, this is just a quick plug in terms of uh, 1951. Again, um, if you're joining watching the program, follow if you're liking the content, follow the page. If you're watching via YouTube, hit the subscribe button, right? And also the notification so that when we go live, you get notified, right? And you can also always stay on top of the content, right? So if you're watching via Facebook, follow the page. And if you're watching via YouTube, hit the subscribe button and ensure that you stay subscribed to our YouTube channel, Island Learning Grenada. So let's continue, Eric Matthew Gary. So um, he continued in his capacity as a member of parliament, colony representative for Grenada in 1951, 1954, and in 1957. In the 1957, he lost that elections, and he lost that elections to a man called Herbert Blaze. So for those, Herbert Blaze was also a prime minister of Grenada. He was the he led a party called the Grenada National Party, GNP. Today, that party is, well, there's lots of changes, but today the party is now the new National Party. But it started out as the Grenada National Party. It was a party by um, Herbert Blaise. But over the years, it morphed and morphed and changed and changed. And today, I guess the remnants of it would be the new National Party. Right, but the beginning was the GNP. So in 1957, Eric Gary lost the election, so he came out of government, and um, Herbert Blaise became in charge of Grenada. Um, it was short-lived, though. Um, Gary still continued to have lots of support, um, political support, and he managed to regain um, the position of chief minister. Again, that was before. In this is before independence. Uh, so there wasn't prime minister. Prime minister is a title that came with the with the achievement of independence. So before independence, there was colony representative, there was chief chief minister, there was premier. But the prime minister title came with the achievement of independence. So Sir Eric Matthew Gary uh, was the first prime minister because. Prime Minister titles come with independence. So I just wanted to ensure that uh, I, 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 I made that, that point, right? So before independence, it was a chief minister. Right, so in the 1960s, it was the chief minister that was the who was uh, 
who was in charge of some of the internal affairs Grenada wasn't independent so Britain still had a, a major role there was always a governor on island and that governor would of course be Britain's representative and ensure um the affairs of the island was being managed and the governor would have oversight over the chief minister who was the local person and in that capacity it would have been Sir Eric Matthew Geary in 1961 and 1962 and in and most of the 1960s right before that it was colony representative that was the title so again I'll be for independence so Sir Eric Matthew Geary was uh, chief minister in 1961 and then in 1962 in 1962 Sir Eric Matthew Geary was expelled from government and he was expelled from government due to events known as squander mania. So we're going to talk about that a little bit later on what exactly was squander mania. But that's, that's another historic event in terms of Grenada's history. There was squander mania. So he was expelled in 1962 uh, from government because of the squander mania events. He did return. He returned in 1967 and became Premier, which was the new title because Grenada was now an associated state or had achieved associated statehood. So associated statehood is a, was the state before independence. So it basically means that Grenada was in charge of most of its affairs although Britain retained in charge of defense and foreign affairs. But all the other aspects of governance, um, the premier, who was Gary at the time, had control over. So that was the pre-state to independence, associated statehood. And that was achieved in 1967. So Grenada became an associated state in 1967. That um, political status also came um, after the breakup of the West Indian Federation. So the West Indian Federation, which will educate more about probably in November, because that's around TMRA show, both day and so forth. But the West Indian Federation was the first attempt of Caribbean integration led by our own Grenadian TMRA show. It, it, um, it was from 1962, um, sorry, from 1959, I believe, to 1962, it broke up eventually. Um, so once it broke up, the islands went their own way. Jamaica and Trinidad became independent right after. And then some of the smaller islands, like Grenada, they moved into a political status called Associated Statehood, which Grenada achieved in 1967. Um, so Gary B was the premier again. The prime minister is a status that comes with independence. So, in under associated statehood, premier was the title for the leader of the country. Uh, so Gary continued to serve as premier until 1972. He won the elections in 1972 and continued his reign as premier. In 1973 is when Gary decided that he wanted Grenada to move towards an independent status. So uh, once that decision was made, uh, his focus became championing and championing and advocating for Grenada's independence uh, with Britain. So he traveled to London and had several conversations, etc., to get Grenada. Um, to independence in 1974. So Britain agreed in 1973 and work began to move Grenada to become independent on February 7th, 1974. So on February 7th, 1974, Grenada achieved independence uh, 
under Sir Eric Matthew Gary as the first Prime Minister and Sir Leo de Gale. We're going to talk about Sir Leo de Gale in next week's program. But Sir Leo de Gale became the first governor um, of Grenada, or governor general, um, which is more the title, of Grenada as an independent nation. Gary would remain Prime Minister from 1974 to 1979 uh, until he was overthrown in 1979, March 1979, by the New Jewel Movement, and that was the political party led by um, Morris Bishop, who led the Grenada Revolution and some of his comrades under the NG NJM. So we're going to take a break again. Um, if you're loving the content, hit follow on your on the Facebook page. If you're watching us via Facebook and if you're watching us via YouTube, hit the subscribe button to subscribe to our content on our YouTube channel, Island Learning Grenada. We're going to take a quick break again and then we will be right back. So uh, while we take the break, of course, uh, say hello if you want to say hello, don't be shy. And then, of course, um, share the program so that we can reach a wider audience. So let's take a, a quick break and we'll be right back. <music> Okay, so we are back. I hope hopefully you would have clicked the, the follow if you're loving the content on our Facebook page. Or if you're watching us via YouTube, you hit the subscribe button. And of course, share the live uh, so others can also take in the content here on our page, Island Learning Grenada. Again, shout out to Pineapple Marketing and Communications for bringing the show live on their Facebook page. It is much appreciated. And ensure to check them out if you are a small business for all your marketing and promotion of your small business. So let's continue with Eric, Sir Eric Matthew Geary. So Sir Eric Matthew Geary was a notable political leader uh, for four, four, four reasons. So the first one we're going to talk about is the squander mania. So the squander mania occurred in 1962. So in 1962, allegations were made against Sir Eric Matthew Gary that he was squandering government or public funds. He was the, the chief minister at the time, uh, the head of Grenada outside of the governor who reported to Britain. And he was accused of squandering public funds, misusing public funds uh, for, so two of the allegations, one that he was using public funds uh, to purchase um, items that were not needed. For example, he was accused of buying uh, a piano um, for the prime minister's residence located at Mount Royal. So that's where um, Eric Gary was staying with his family and he was accused of using public funds to buy a grand piano for the prime minister's residence and also for buying lots of new furniture uh, for government house. So that was the accusation. It was a strong accusation and it resulted in, go in Eric Gary being expelled from government. Uh, that's what took place because of that accusation. And then there was a commission who investigated the um, misuse of public funds. So that's one of the memorable things that, um, well, memorable, quote unquote, that Eric Gary is associated with, the squander mania. Then there's also Bloody Monday and Bloody Sunday. 
So Bloody Monday occurred on January 21st, 1974. So just weeks within Grenada achieving independence in 1974, there was a massive strike across the island, which resulted in the shutdown of businesses in the St. George's area. Lots of demonstration and demonstrators looting occurred. And it was also on that fateful day that um, Rupert Bishop, who was the father of Morris Bishop, was killed. So that is Bloody Monday. Bloody Sunday occurred um, the year before in 1973 on November 18th, in which several members of the mutual movement, so that was the political party led by its bishop and also included comrades such as Unison Whiteman, Kenrick Radix, Hudson Hudson, Selwyn Strand, they were attacked and arrested in Grenville. They were jailed, uh, put in jail and accused of um, possession of firearms and ammunition. So that was the events of Bloody Sunday. So it's alleged that um, Gary orchestrated um, the arrest and attack um, of the six members of the New Jewel movement in Grenville on Bloody uh, Sunday. So Gary, so that's uh, something else. And lastly, the Mongoose Gang. So those who grew up will probably have heard about Mongoose Gang, even though you're probably young like me and you didn't hear much, just a little bit, just a little rara about some Mongoose Gang. But anyways, um, so Eric Matthew Gary is known for um, this whole Mongoose Gang. And what essentially was Mongoose Gang? Mongoose Gang was essentially a private secret police that, um, and that's saying it nicely, that um, Eric Gary had. It was a group of men, and they were most noted for going around and um, handling people who were anti-Gary, right? So that, that's what they were known for. So they would pick up persons who were anti-Gary, whether it beat them, whatever, etc. But that was the main workings of the Mongoose Gang. The Mongoose Gang came to an end in the um 1970s after a commission the do first commission recommended that the mongoose gang be suspended right but there were a secret police force that gary had that ensured that um people stay loyal and those who weren't loyal were dealt with And the last thing before we wrap up the program today will be to talk about, despite the squander mania, despite the bloody Sunday, despite the bloody Monday, despite the mongoose gang, uh, activities associated with Sir Eric Matthew Gary in the build-up to independence and even after independence, um, until 1979, when he no longer served as prime minister, Eric Gary um, was a visionary. He was a visionary political leader. He had um, a vision for Grenada, and he was able to um, do some notable, notable um, things uh, that today still remains part of our, our lives in Grenada. So we're going to talk a little bit about that. So this quote here uh, came from Sir Eric Matthew Geary, that he had a vision to build Grenada and make Grenada a place of global repute and recognition. So he, he as I said, he was a visionary. So what was in his vision? Um, so agriculture reform. Eric Gary um, was a leader of agricultural workers. Um, that was his base support were the estate workers. So one of the initiatives um, that he started was Land for the Landless. And Land for the Landless was an initiative whereby lands would be um, given to those who were poor and did not have lands. So the initiative was 
the intent was to give poor working class Grenadians who were unable to purchase lands the ability to become landowners. It was a promise he made that got him into power in the 1967 elections. And although he started it, he didn't achieve as much success with it, but he did start it. He began to take private estate lands that got him into trouble. Take private estate lands from um, owners of those lands and redistribute those lands to poor working class people. So he started to take those lands, but uh, he never redistributed it. So the government in 1967 period took lands from estates, big estates, and they took the lands with the intent to give poor working class Grenadians, and it never it never materialized as the vision was, but the land for the landless is still quoted today as one of the ways of doing agricultural reform by redistributing lands uh, so that working class people could access lands, right? Today it's called, um, I think they're calling it land transformation or something, but it's the, the, the intent of it still remains um, some of the intent that Sir Eric Matthew Geary had. And then there was Expo 69. So Expo 69 occurred in April 1969, and it was the first regional exposition on uh, trade and export character um, held and it was held in Grenada. Um, sorry, Gary had the vision to bring it to Grenada. And he basically um, held it in a, from April 5th to the 30th, Expo 69. At the time, the south of St. George's was very underdeveloped. So the Mont Rouge area, the Lansapin area, the Trouble area was very underdeveloped. And one of the things the Expo 69 did was the construction of roads in the south of the island in order to accommodate this big exposition that brought in um, representatives from across the region to participate in this first regional exposition. So the Expo 69 is noted for some of the early development of the south of the St. George's area, the Mon Rouge, Lansapin, and True Blue Road infrastructure. And that was again because Gary had his vision so that Grenada would host Expo 69. And of course, you can't talk about Gary without talking about he was the mastermind behind um, have bringing um, a medical school to Grenada. So St. George's University, which today accounts for almost 20% of GDP, it was uh, under the leadership and vision of Sir Eric Matthew Geary um, that the medical school was started, the True Blue Campus, very small back in the day, um, but it was under his vision that that university uh, was, was started. And of course, today continues to play a major role in terms of economic activity and educational development of Grenadian citizens on Ireland, of course, internationally, because we have lots of students from the US, et cetera, um, Africa coming to the medical school and, and so forth. So that was under Sir Eric Matthew Geary as a, he was, as I said, he was a visionary, a visionary leader. And to wrap up lastly, so so uh, what, what became of him? So he eventually died in 1997. Um, when the revolution began in March 1979, he was out of the country at the time and um, provided the, the perfect um, opportunity for the overtake of the island um, by the NGM. NJM, Maurice Bishop and his comrades. And uh, he stayed out of the island for many years and then eventually returned to Grenada in the um, 1984 period. He returned to, to Grenada and uh, he stayed 
and then he continued to participate in political life his last election that he participated in was in 1995 he ran for the saint george's south seat in 1995 election he did not win the seat um but he ran and um the year after in 1996 uh, he had a, a massive stroke and he eventually died in august 1997. Uh, several things have been done to commemorate his contribution to Grenada's journey to independence, including in 2009, he was named the first hero of Grenada by the uh, New National, I think, uh, 2009 by the, by, the part, by the government at the time. Uh, so in 2009, Eric Gary became the first hero of Grenada. And then in 2015, that monument was unveiled in the um, Botanica Gardens that you see there today, that monument of Sir Eric Matthew Gary, right? So these are some of the, the things that have been done to commemorate his contribution to Grenada's journey to independence. As I said, the independence would not have occurred if uh, Sir Eric Matthew Gary did not pursue it in 1973 and bring it into fruition. He is known as the father of independence and the first prime minister of Grenada. So that began Grenada's journey to uh, independence, of which today we can say we celebrate um, 49 years of independence. Again, just a quick re re recap, if you, you're watching the program right an hour after, you could see um, Eric, Gary, Eric Matthew Gary was going to be first prime minister. Is that a yes or no? You can drop it in the comments if you're looking at the program. Um, say yes or no if that's, that, that, is, that is true.